Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, understanding and reading the phase meter inside Studio One. If you're looking for a good visual representation of what's going on inside your stereo field, or want to see if your signals are canceling themselves out, you're going to want to use the phase meter as a visual representation. It doesn't mean to always have it on and to constantly be looking at it, but it's a good point of reference finding out what's going on inside your session. Let's dive into the DIW and take a look at what it is and how to read it. So here on my main out, I've put an instance of the phase meter. Let's start off by explaining each of the parts of the phase meter. It's actually two meters in one. This top part is called a vector scope, and this bottom line is a correlation meter. What I'm gonna do for this test is just put on a tone generator, and you'll see that when it's mono, you get a straight line on the vector scope. A straight vertical line means that your source is mono. What I can do now is grab the pan slider and push our signal to the left or right, and you'll see the vector scope change as well as the correlation meter, but we'll talk about the correlation meter later. Going left, you'll see that the line starts to show bias to the left. And if we do the opposite, it shows bias to the right. In our scope, it's showing the signal is only coming out of the right speaker and no signal is coming out of the left speaker. On my main outs, I have an instance of the mix tool that is just inverting the phase of my right side. If I turn this on, you'll see the vector scope change. Now I have a horizontal line. This is showing me I have an out of phase signal. Let's take this off and talk about what's going on in the correlation meter. When the correlation meter is all the way to the right, you have a perfectly mono signal, which we've confirmed it, this is a mono signal. If I take the pan slider and push it all the way to the left, you'll watch the correlation meter go to the center, showing that we have a perfectly stereo or an object perfectly in one section of the stereo field. We're gonna put this back to center and we'll activate our mix tool again, knowing that this will invert the phase of the right side. And the correlation meter shows that happening. When the correlation meter is all the way to the left, you have a perfectly out of phase signal. But this isn't what it looks like when we're mixing music or voices. So let's take a listen and watch the meter dance around with a mix. You can see that the correlation meter hovered in the positive area and didn't push all the way to mono, and it also didn't stay right in the center because we have information both right up the center and coming out of the stereo field. If your meter shows it going to the negative, you have some out of phase things happening in your stereo field. You also saw the vector scope showing all kinds of imaging going on between the left and the right and the middle. Let's watch what happens to the meter when we throw our instance of mix tool on. I took a second and I actually copied the mix tool to the send going to you guys so you'll hear what's happening as well. Let me give you an A, B comparison of what's happening. I'll take the phase inverted mix tool out and put it in after a couple of seconds. You could see on the meter, when we inverted the phase of the right side, we got this very weird hollow sounding signal and a lot of what was going on in the center of our vector scope was canceled out and pushed out to the side, showing us that we were out of phase. When we put it back in, we ha then had our mono and center image back as well as everything going on inside the stereo field. Understanding how to read the phase meter will give you a good visual representation of what's going on inside your stereo field. This isn't something that I normally have up, but if I hear something that's very hollow and weird sounding, I might throw this on to see if I have something out of phase and canceling it out. 
This is just a reference tool that I pull up every once in a while. And for my workflow, it's not normally a thing, but it's good to have the understanding of how to read it. That's all for now. If you found this video informative, please like and share the video. For more, please go to timplansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in a comment and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.